Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. In this video, we're going to go over five of my top tools that I like to use on Photoshop and how I would use it to design a poster or an advertisement of mine, depending on what I'm working on. Let's get to it. The first tool obviously is going to have to go to the pen tool. And the reason I like the pen tool is because you need it to select pretty much everything and it gives you the best results in my opinion without having pixelated edges. How it works, we're just going to quickly do a quick sample. Let's say we wanted to take out this right here. You would just draw however you wanted. Make sure it ends the last point, go to selection. And basically this makes it a bit better. You can go two, three, four. Normally I go two or four and you can see that it selected something for you perfectly. And if we make a mask from it, make sure you're on the layer, select the mask and you can see that it's got a nice selection of what you just did. And this part here on the edges is essentially the feather that I had. Another thing you can do with pen tool, if you switch this to shape, you can actually create shapes. And so in this case, let's make a random triangle. And you can see the stroke is there and let's make the triangle this color. As you can see, the pen tool has pretty much good use and it's one of my favorite tools to use and one that you're probably gonna use a lot of times. One thing to keep in mind when you're using the pen tool is that it's not easy to use. It will take practice and at first you're going to be very slow. It's going to be daunting and you're not going to want to do it. One thing that I do recommend you guys do is play this mini game that I found, the Bezier game. It allows you to essentially use the pen tool and practice with it. So it's going to give you random shapes just like this one and you're just going to have to use the pen tool to shape them out. It's going to start with easy ones but as you go on it's going to give you much difficult ones. But essentially, it's going to teach you the basics of the pen tool. You guys should give it a try and let me know what you think about it in the comments. Another thing to keep in mind when using the pen tool is that after you make a curve, the next point is automatically going to be a curve. And this could be annoying if your next line is just supposed to be straight and not another curve. To fix this, it's pretty simple. The last point that you ever made, you need to hold Alt and left click on the point. This would allow you to make a straight line once again. Another tool of my favorites is gradients. It's pretty simple to use. The gradient is right here, which you can access through here, or you can also click G on your keyboard. You'll also notice that gradients have two basic styles. And so you'll have this one, which is two solid colors and will hide your image just like that. If you select these circles, it will allow you to change the colors as well. And in this case, let's make some flame type of style. That looks pretty cool but it does hide our image. So what if we just wanted to have the flames on the bottom or red on the bottom? And that's pretty simple. You just use the second option here and that will make the bottom have a solid color while the top is clear, no matter what you do. And this could be cool if you wanted to make something dark on the image, just like that. But it doesn't end there. You can also make it much better and control it as much as you want. And this is where the third tool comes to play. When you're working with masks, in this case, this layer right here, where it has the white image, or if you do control I, it will also make it black. I'll tell you the differences in a moment. Essentially the white, anything that you paint white will keep it like the same as it is. Whereas if you did black, it would remove the image just like you're seeing now. And the other option is where we have black. And this is exactly the same, except it's the opposite. If we paint with white, it will color in black where if we paint with black, it will take it away. This is very useful when you're designing because it allows you to control everything that you're seeing and making adjustments based on what you want. In this case, let's pretend we're designing this. We would start with the inverted and we would go to white. So we would probably select the bottom here just to make it dark, but you can see that the car gets lost. That's where we start brushing it away and bring it back to life. And then you can play around with the opacity and you can make it look pretty cool. And you can see that the car jumps out a lot more than it originally did. Obviously you can do this with many colors and it's definitely gonna attract the eye to your work. My fourth favorite tool is the clone stamp tool. Clone stamp tool is one of the ways that you can remove something from an image. And it's just one that I like to use and I've always used it since I've started Photoshop. And it's pretty simple to use. Essentially this shape here is gonna be the target. So for example, if we click Alt, you'll see this little icon here. And that just means it's gonna select this part of the image right here. And so let's click that. And you can see we can color away the image. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if the car is yellow, you want to keep around the same shades to make it look consistent. For example, if we were to do the red, it's obviously going to paint the red. Another thing we can do, which is also useful and it doesn't require the clone stamp tool, is the patch tool. The patch tool, you essentially draw around the thing you want to remove and then you slide it to the side. And you can see that it's just going to take the form of whatever I want to put there. And we're going to go with that. After we're done with our selection, just click Control D 
and you can see that the image is also gone. And from there, you could sort of see the lines from where you drew it out, and that's pretty easy to fix as well. You can use a spot healing brush tool. Essentially, this will blend shapes together to make it look more consistent and hide it a bit more. As you can see, it's much better but obviously still needs a bit of work and you can also use the clone stamp tool to fix it up a bit too. If it was me, I would use a clone stamp tool to make the line right here that you see this reflection and match the colors up here. Although I just showed you a few little tools there, they all do pretty much the same thing and they can be used at the same time to do the same similar project or to fix around to make it look even better. So. With that being said, I'm just going to show you another tool that's also pretty cool and can make pretty epic text. For example, in this case, we're going to use Ferrari and we're going to change it to white. Let's make it 300 points and let's adjust like that. We're going to turn this text layer into a rasterized type. Then we're going to go to filter liquify. Liquify is pretty cool because you can do custom text. And so, for example, we're just going to do a quick one. Let's pretend we're just pushing it up and it's kind of raining from the top. Obviously, you could play around with this more and I'm just pretty much doing a quick for you to see. But you can see that it makes a cool concept and you can also use it for other things, which I'll show you another example of what I use it for, which I've actually used in my past posters. As you can see, it makes a pretty cool style and it's kind of different than the ordinary text that you see in ads or poster designs. And those are my top five tools to use when creating poster designs. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn other tools that could be useful and how they work. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.